So welcome everyone to the fourth episode of Che Kuan Yin, uh, where we refactor legacy software and uh, make tea. Cheers! So last time um, we did, um, we finished the infrastructure for testing and uh, we did some small features and we did uh, production monitoring uh, with Sentry. Uh, we have integrated with that. Uh, so today may be some time for features, um, but first um, let's take a look what the monitoring brought actually. Um, so there is a Slack uh, set up for this project um, that you're welcome to join if you want to. Um, let me bring it to the screen correctly. Um, There you go. And um, in here we indeed had a problem, uh, which is uh, too many connections to a MySQL database. So that can be actually um, done by two things. Uh, window opened somewhere else. Um, this is usually caused by one of the multiple um, causes. So one may be, um, we have indeed opened uh, a new usable application and um, the, the MySQL server is configured to uh, not account for that and has the connection limit too low. Uh, the other one is that, uh, you know, we have overshot with the amount of connections from uh, the app that we are using. Um, the third one may be that uh, we're not closing connections properly. So, in this case, um, well, it happened twice uh, in, in the last week. Uh, so let's actually take a look when... Um, well, twice at the same time to a simple single user. Um, would be interesting to know whether it was a bot or not. Um, but um, identified the Scrum, so no idea. Uh, so this, um, this 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 could be one of those. Now, what frameworks are usually doing is that they do have a um, so-called connection pool. Uh, they have an open connection. They, they have open pool of uh, connections that are uh, open to the database, and they're using them between requests. So. If uh, we have that configured to high, um, then we can potentially overshoot the, the server. Uh, if you would be using the database manually, then I would say let's check whether we are closing connections correctly under all circumstances. Um, with Django, I am tempted to believe that they do it correctly. Uh, of course, like never uh, trust everything, uh, but. I do believe that um, we should start with the configuration first. Um, I don't believe that we do have any specific pull guidance uh, on production. And um, I also think that we are only running two processes, um, which we can verify in this show script that's actually used uh, for running. So yes, we are using uh, Geonicorn with two, wor two workers. So um, let's see how the connection pulling works in uh, Django. What amount is open? I heard it's open by default because maybe not. I see. Um, and maybe it is not the case indeed. So by default Django is opening and closing connection every time, which I mean for the low traffic website is 
okay-ish, um, but can lead to those fluctuations in uh, connection numbers. So let's take a look. Uh, I, I would say that one minute um, is probably fine, and connection max age. Um, is it um, in the database dictionary or is it a top level database? No, so it is. It is in the connection dictionary. So let's set it. And is it in seconds? Hmm. Doesn't say. Which would be good to know. Um, but, oh, in seconds. I just can't read. Um, so let's put it there. Uh, let's put it in the example so we know that we have set it. Um, so connection max age um, is going to be 60. And um, I will set it in connection of screen. Uh, and to enforce it, we, may, we can actually um, deploy a new version. Uh, because what we uh, do have, what you should do, uh, and we haven't done last time, is the cleanup. We have deployed a new version of um, the Sentry driver, uh, but we haven't cleaned up the uh, uh, we haven't cleaned up the old driver. But in order to do that, uh, our server needs to work, <laughs> and we may have a problem. And uh, just for the record, if you remember, uh, this is a very old server, so just the the hardware is going uh, down unpredictably. Um, so let's do what I did last time and uh, ask um, the server managers to restart it, which helps. Uh, I have also discovered that it's probably actually tied to drivers. Sorry for shutting you down, not intentional, but I have logged into the website. <laughs> and as I said, um, that somehow creates problems for o OBS. I have no idea why. Uh, I will need to uh, figure it out, it seems. Uh, so let me put in a request. Um, Again, as I said, this is the reason uh, why you shouldn't have your own hardware. Go for virtual servers whenever you can. So let me ask for restart. And um, while we wait for that, uh, which will take some while, um, we can do this cleanup and we can deploy it later. Uh, so for the uh, purpose of the Revico, uh, the max age, uh, I would still commit it separately. We can do that in master because it's just documentation. Um, yep. And this is a production, I guess, chore. Well, it is chore. Um, so set uh, connection max H to prevent, uh, prevent problems uh, with um, connection limit. It doesn't really prevent it, but uh, it helps with that. Uh, 
um, so that we can push. So we uh, we also see whether a circle still, still works for us correctly. And um, then we will look it up, and then let's see what's um, what, a, what is a good feature that we can do. Um, right, and there is one more chore that we need to do, uh, unfortunately, and that's uh, upgrading circle, because otherwise uh, circle will be upgraded for us, uh, which is not something that uh, we want to do. Uh, since we want to verify that, uh, so two charts today. Um, so let's do the cleanup first. Um, that is also immediately deployable. Uh, so that was uh, in requirements deleting the Raven. Right. Right, so we do have center SDK here. I've been missing it. So let's delete Raven and let's delete the Raven config. Um, there is also in examples, so there is no actual change in the code. Well, except for changing the requirements, true. Removing the requirements. Um, Have we had a ticket for that? Um, kind of missing a timeline uh, from good old uh, days of uh, track. No, not really. I mean, we can kind of relate it to this sort of two. No. Okay. So, let's relate it to sort of two and be done with it. Um, and then uh, we should switch to pipelines. So let's do a, let's do that in new branch. Uh, and um, in order to do that, I think that we actually needed to switch it in the user interface. So let's just wait for at least one of those, yeah, to see whether we haven't screwed up. And in project settings. In advanced settings, um, enable pipelines. So Is this saved automatically? Looks like that. Yep. So if we push, um, we should have a pipeline. I need to check up whether I do have my dot files here. Um, so this should get built as well, and um, let's see whether there's anything in pipelines <coughs> that we need. Um, so conditional workflows we don't really need, uh, maybe for docs. But we 
this version to the ton of configuration. Well, if this is it, then that was easy. Um, So maybe let's try the 2.1, uh, at least whether it will still work. And uh, sorry, not circle it by, but uh, circle dot yaml. Hmm. Indexing doesn't work properly. Oh right, wait. I have been actually getting away w without using um, YAML since... oh, here is it. I've been suspicious. Um, that, that was my original idea. Let's build a pure Django project and uh, don't bother with any circle YAML. Uh, but um, then we started doing uh, MySQL and uh, proper testing with, uh, uh, with Selenium, so... That uh, doesn't work very well. Um, so here's our steps for the jobs. So if we do 2.1, can we use this as a single pipeline and just be done with it for the time being? And based on this, the answer seems to be yes. And we could also do auto deploy for master. Now, um, this is actually something that I think is, um, you know, an interesting consideration, like whether you should automatically deploy master that's built. And um, when I when I'm doing this at work, uh, I am always saying no, uh, although people love it. Uh, but I'm against uh, deploying to production when nobody's at keys because you always has to account for the things that uh, you know think go wrong. And uh, I think that there always should be an accountability, and like someone in particular being responsible for uh, uh, for making this work. So uh, my take on this is actually uh, deploy to staging or like deploy build somewhere, uh, and have someone to like explicitly go and mark the uh, promotion to production. Uh, the rule of the thumb also is, uh, for me at least, that master is always deployable uh, and should always be deployable. Um, but um, the the like the automatic promotion always leads to problems uh, at scale. So um, even even for this project, I wouldn't go forward. Uh, but let's commit it, upgrade, uh, and see whether it works. So to do on circle format. And that reference is um, 50. So this should just go and be easy. Uh, also, let me just open a terminal that, will, that would ping our server to see whether we are healthy. But as I'm saying, it's an old server. <laughs> um, so we do have a build running. Uh, we don't need those features, uh, but our previous push failed. So let's see what went wrong. Uh, so someone is importing and relying on Raven. So um, this is a good example of even when you think you can't uh, destroy anything, uh, there's always a way. Um, but why would we be importing Raven here? 
Oh, uh, because it required a compatibility application. Okay, good to know, um, but let's not commit it in this branch. Uh, let's fix master first. This belongs to master. And I don't like uh, reverting history in master, uh, so let's just do fix uh, remove raven combat application. And that was not required in the new, uh, s uh, not selenium, in the new Sentry client. Uh, so this should work on production TM. Let's see when we'll be able to upgrade. But once we do, um, then we have this part of the project done. So let's see what we have in the project pipeline for the EVAC. That's the most important thing. So fixing static media, um, the user profile sites. Um, that I think um, deserves attention. Um, what we don't have a ticket for, uh, but it's kind of obvious if you look at the site. Uh, let me run it. Uh, so let's open a window, source to the virtual environment in the correct directory, of course. Um, and um, this is uh, manage file and server on all ports. Um, right, so you see all of those uh, dead links. So those are uh, the uh, sections that we haven't converted yet. Uh, so those are basically all should be separate tickets that I've, I haven't created. And those are the ones that uh, you know make the obvious impression when you go to the server. So I actually do wonder whether or not to work on those first. Um, Stack media, all right, this is to avoid hard coding. Um, yeah, I would do that. The next one would be the user profile. But actually, what you know, people, I think at least people those days will pay attention to is to be able uh, to look up the work that has been done, um, you know, not to traverse on authors and whatnot. Um, so let me create a ticket for that and um, let's move forward with that, with it. So the server seems to be back online, at least based on pinging it. Let's give it some time to boot up before I start. Uh, debugging, but maybe um, this will send us the emails we want. Um, but let's create this issue. Um, so make all and what was there? So there's actually a section called graveyard uh, for describing these deceased characters um, that you've played for. Um, so that skills. Um, Dungeons, this one actually will be interesting because um, 
that uh, requires quite a bit of um, custom uploads to FTP and all that uh, so that we could also improve um, uh, downloads which is pure uh, originally actually uh, quite a few of like homemade uh, custom software to help you navigate uh, links is actually a question whether or not to abandon uh, because uh, that is basically a list of uh, friendly sites but I have no idea what the impact on SEO is and I think that we also should like this is 20 years old almost 15 to 20 years old most of them um, so you know a check on whether they're up um, may be worth it and whether it actually contains uh, the, or the original intended content um, so this could be like this technically may so I should be um, uh, like a ticket per the creative page, but uh, it's not what I want to do now. But let's just reference it and check it for simplification. Okay, so it works as a checklist. What about those? So let's see whether we have uh, received uh, some alerts about this from Sentry or whether we are still waiting for it to boot up. Actually, either way, um, if I can SSH to server, we should be able to deploy this new version um, and see what happens. Uh, so let me just verify I can SSH. Um, not from this computer. Remember. I don't want to lose you all. Uh, well, actually, is a way to find out. Uh, let's see whether the master has been built. Yep, removing compatible helps. And uh, let's just deploy it. If you're down, it can be worse. Okay, could not find a version of Django that's larger than 2.0 and smaller than 2.1. Have someone unpublished? Um, like, well, let's take a look. That would suck, but also uh, cleaning cache helps uh, usually. But PyPy moved to the PyPy org and. Django release history states two dot one dot fifteen released in December. This is uh, right. We need two dot o. Two dot o dot thirteen. Um, Actually, from from two weeks ago. So, what do you mean? Uh, right. So, um, this is because I'm using a global system. I haven't sourced in the virtual environment. Uh, this is needed. Um, so, let's deploy and make the.
important part. So this is going well. Um, this is not going well. So let me see what's happening there. Indeed. Uh, so let me just quickly go off screen because I'll be uh, doing some private stuff. But um, what I would do first is to check up the database backup rotation. And indeed, um, this doesn't work. I have no idea why. So let me remove some old back backups and then let's try again. Um, so GV and activate. Let me go back to it's another screen. This is also a good uh, reason for server to stop responding, actually. Uh, so let's try to deploy again. Also, of course, something to have monitoring for. So meanwhile, we can look up um, what uh, right. So, so this circle, have we had success on the two dot one, or is it failing for the same reason? Uh, so once we deploy, let's go there and rebase. As you can see, uh, multitasking is really helpful even for programming. I mean, programming mostly about uh, deep focus and shit, but um, you know, when you actually combine that with uh, programming uh, with, with, this, uh, with this ops, um, then it's kind of hairy. So. Uh, let me take a look in the. Private backup folder, how is it going? So we now should have uh, 666G of available space. Um, I'm tempted to say let's reboot. So let me reboot the server. And uh, let's see what happens. What will happen there? Um, so let's wait out for that one. Um, I mean, we can be loyal to the rebase. So. Let's rebase that on top of uh, master and push it. Uh, 
and go back to master. This should give us screen build. And let's see what was so special on those. Um, and also uh, 53, where do we have 53? Um, so this actually, we could take a look at uh, the old project. I'm thinking what to look it for because uh, I still haven't figured out a way for Visual Studio co Code to give me a second workspace. Okay, let's do this, we have time now for everything to pr uh, proceed working. Okay, so this is working. Let's run the deploy. Um, and under the old regime, uh, we had the. Yeah, we had a graveyard, I think, just as a section of. Um, well, do we unified as long articles, so no custom columns. So let me try to find it out. Um, I think it's here. I also think that this should have a yeah a list of those. There is this switch of uh, stuff we could do. Also, as I've said, um, reopen with encoding twelve fifty here. Yep. So this fixed stuff. Um, Yeah, so this should be just done in the same way. Also, let's actually maybe group it if there is something else that's left. Uh, but I do believe that everything else should be custom. Yeah, this is the only one I've missed. Uh-huh. Yep. So let's go back. Um see whether our upgrade works. What could be the problem if not? Mm. I mean, potentially, we have killed the upgrade in uh, progress because of uh, the disk space. Um, there was there was a case where, um, like, if if you re if you remember the part that uh, haven't finished deploying was because we ran out of disk space. So that sometimes le uh, leads to those transitional in between states, mm. and uh, that's a good test of whether we are doing the setup and cleanup right. Uh, so let's just see whether after restart things work, and they don't. Uh, so separately from that, uh, that's a good thing to debug. So let's go there. And see why we haven't survived restarting. Um, so 
So, is there a process running? No. So the WASG server on the background is not running. Um, so, let's see if we would just uh, complain and say that it should go up. Whether it would help? No. Okay. Uh, so let's just verify in the in the server log for light HTTPD. Um, this should have a note, it doesn't. Okay. Does it have access log? Nope. Um, because we do have custom logging. Where is it? Uh, so, uh, we are following the We, have, um, we do have a muzzles thing set up, but actually let me take a look in that run file, um, because if I remember correctly... Um, we are running the GVUnicorn on a port. Oh, and we are not redirecting it anywhere. So, if there is something on the standard uh, uh, on the std error uh, then we are not going to have anything uh, and this is for the php um, that is spidered as well as accessed Oh, there is something. This is us as well, I assume. Uh, so if we take more of it and grip for us, then uh, we do have our five hundreds. But it, uh, it um, I mean, normal error log, sh error log should say that uh, there is a problem connecting to the backend uh, fast CGI. Um, so let's see whether there is uh, something that is not containing PHP. Um, and there is not nothing, so... Hmm. Yeah, also, we are redirecting standard error to standard standard uh, error outputs to the standard output. No idea why this is not starting. So I think that the deploy is running. Cool, and we can't connect to database, it seems. So... A... Okay, so this is a problem. So A, uh, I mean A, we have 
um, created a problem with uh, allowed hosts, uh, but B, you know, we should never see traceback on production. Um, that is a significant problem. And this is also probably causing uh, Sentry not to engage. Although, uh, so let's let me go off screen and check out um, why there is, whether there is debug faults in uh, production settings because there definitely should be. So there is production.py. And it doesn't say the book falls explicitly, which of course is a major omission. Uh, so let me uh, fix that and restart the process. I do wonder though whether really um, it is the problem that it was booting so slow or it required a deploy um, because that would suck. And sure, this load hosts uh, that's okay because I haven't been fixing it, but um, we shouldn't, we should never get. We should never get um, a debug output, and my only other guess is, if I haven't m made a mistake, uh, in, like syntactic mistake in the file. And uh, that causing the import chain not to import it. Um, and that is indeed the case because, right, because I haven't connected and um, imported. Yeah, um, uh, d d d d d I haven't did the cleanup about Raven. So, whoops, um, let's see whether the things work now. Um, let me call the process. So we do have a uh, we do have a clean process set up. Uh, so let me let me actually source as a. Let me actually source as a as the user that we're running with. Uh, source into the virtual environment. Uh, so we have all the packages. And if I run Python and import production, then everything works. Oh, not what I wanted. Uh, so something is fishy here. And in in that production, um, there is old host uh, old hosts um, for this domain. Uh, so I really think that it is 
um, the application not importing uh, the production settings properly which on the other, uh, other hand means that we are not uh, exposing production secrets uh, which is good news this is not a security breach um, uh, on stream but it also means that our upgrade uh, hasn't went well uh, so one thing that we could also potentially do uh, is to be more stringent about what to do uh, when we are importing using environment variable um, let's see how our blah blah works So one thing is that uh, if we can't import production then we shouldn't, we, we're trying to import local but neither of those should be there. Uh, let me actually verify. Um, so if we go to graveyard settings We do have a local that's by. How come? How have we accidentally committed it? So there is local that's by. And there is also production that's by that indeed uh, contains import driven. So. Have we, ex uh, have we accidentally committed stuff and need to redo everything? Let's verify. Rotate all the keys in that case. Um, but it should be in gitignore. So, graveyard... Now, on the examples here, um, how exactly are we are syncing to production? So, we're moving requirements. Um, right, because I'm doing uh, rsync on the current directory uh, as opposed to a clean checkout, I guess. Um, So, a good solution to that would be to properly uh, I mean this step should put the production pie over there, right? So we need to, uh, so I need to recopy that because I haven't be uh, I haven't done that. So that is the problem. Uh, so this is the deployment that I forgot about, and um, this I think is also a good demonstration of where you really should have immutable deploys. Um, to be done as we go. So let's copy production to like well actually no. Let us deploy again and 
I believe that we can do dash dash deletes because we're going to delete production dot pi using that uh, but it is going to be copied in the next step from a directory that is above the directory we're copying to because remote roots Uh, remote remote root is in the application subdirectory, uh, whereas our production.py is somewhere else. Um, let me just back it up uh, somewhere out of that root. Um, so we don't end up uh, completely redoing production from sketch which unfortunately would take some time currently uh, since we don't have any um, any safety controls set um, this also explains why we couldn't we couldn't connect because we have our synced uh, incorrectly um, this of course uh, brings the common question uh, that one encounters during debugging. How come it could work previously? I have no idea. Uh, also, I started deploying without actually making the change. And uh, let me verify whether I'm in a correct branch. Uh, yes, so let's actually make the delete. And before I commit it, uh, use delete for our sync. Uh, Production.py uh, is uh, moved from a different directory uh, in the next step. Let's not push it and deploy it first to see whether it works because there is no good way to test it right now. As you can see, as always, um, It takes some time to start actually doing what you want. Uh, so let's see. I'm just checking what people are writing. some new team. In this case I'm willing to wait, <laughs> so um, if you have any questions now is a good time to ask. I still do wonder about that restart though. Um, why hasn't it built it up? Uh, but it just requires more time um, because I mean the service also slow because of um, well we couldn't really figure out a good setting of the hard disks we bought and the motherboard we bought uh, at one point and um, so-called DMA setting direct memory access. So for um, most of the 
accesses to hard disk uh, stuff actually goes to processor, true processor, which uh, slows down everything significantly. Uh, but um, you know, given what's running on the server, uh, we kind of never bothered. Um, but there are times when it hurts. So. No error, error about database. So system check and migration work. That's a good start. This is not a good start, but hopefully uh, that is our known restart problem. Uh, so let's kill that guy. See what happens. Ta-da! We are back at the starting point. Um, so... Um, if the circle worked, yep. Uh, so... Let's not be it as a root on the server. Uh, and let's push the deploy part and let's merge I mean let's rebase first um, and uh, let's merge the say upgrades and push everything and with that we are done about those all right so this can be declared done i believe um was there another chore oh, that we had to get for No, um, we have actually sorted out this one, if I believe. Um, because we do have a, yeah, this, this we had done uh, some time ago. So let's take a look in the comments and see what was it. Um, I think that in this one uh, we have migrated towards using uh, yeah towards using uh, port ranges. So let's mark that one as done as well. was there the best part of fixing tickets um, you know wait them out yeah so I think that um, also typo here um, let's move on with this guy so the graveyard uh, should be the easiest. Uh, so this um, should just require us to go into the pages fixture, um, and it is same as basically same as the new articles. So. Unfortunately, we can't put this in order, but that shouldn't matter. So, uh, oh, come on. I don't know. It is a, it's, we should copy a common article. Um, that, because that's the one it is. Um, 
Let's not make mistakes here. Okay, pasting doesn't work exactly as expected for problem with Emma. So lucky number 13. Um, the name is graveyard in check. Um, model class is common article. This is it, so let's reload it. Uh, so that's manage build fixtures pages. Old fixture. Ah. Okay. Stuff changed when I have not been paying attention. So load data. Um, and if we take a look at the template, so this would be a um, I think that uh, we should, since this is valid in object, um, yep, this will give us like we can reuse um, all the stuff we did and I believe that maybe the only thing that we need to do is to uh, because in, in templates it should uh, reuse the creation section uh, uh, creative pages yeah the common article which it should auto detect based on model um, so the only thing that we need to fix is the overall uh, public template for it to have a proper link. So this was somewhere near the beginning. Yeah. So oh, the name should be a bit of slug is also the short version. So if you take a look, um, not at the production, but at our dev version, we should have a link. And no creative page is matching the given query. Hmm. Sure. Because I got sucked into talking in English. Uh, so let's redo that. Uh, we're calling based on Slack. Yeah, this is overridden based on. Uh, this is overridden based on the slack. But otherwise, this seems to be working. Um, so quick and easy, the way we like it. Uh, let's actually make a branch for it. Uh, see how far we can go and merge it at once. Uh, so new creative pages. Um, so make graveyard available. Um, and the issue we are is for this 53. Uh, references 53. So let's see whether all the tests pass. Also, we haven't exactly edited a few. And move on. And before we do, uh, let me make a short tea break. Uh, so while the tests are running, 
uh, we'll pause the stream and we will be back at uh, 3 p.m. So, see you soon. All right, so we'll come back, everyone. And next up is going for the next creative page. Uh, so this one we've done, although we haven't deployed, true. Uh, so let's move to skills. So skills, I do believe, uh, had their own uh, had, had, had their own data structure. Um, let me actually try text edit for having the PHP you know open in parallel. Um, but uh, meanwhile, we can take a look at the uh, legacy model. So no, no text edit clouds, but volume and did you see that? I saw you. Um, and in there it was in code, well, www code and um, skulls I've been saying, right? Yeah. So this is the detail. Yep, so it had its own. Uh, it has its own table, but I actually don't know why. Now that I look at what's in. Uh, because there is nothing that couldn't be merged into the normal um, article. So let's actually also take a look at the web page. I mean, the original web page. And um, take a look at what was in. So there is definitely more. Okay, so um, there are additional attributes. Um, right, they're just not selected on the overall page. Um, this is the one that I wanted. Yep, this is the detail. So here you can see them. And uh, also there's one thing that we are using attributes that are um, in Czech. Uh, and I've been wondering that uh, we probably should do that in English. Because there is a way in Django to specify uh, the database field model. Um, but in those cases, you can still uh, still use whatever attribute you make. Now, it is not cool to change those decisions in the middle of uh, um, in the middle of um, doing um, uh, doing the migration because then you you know things are not consistent and that's usually actually worse um, than um, having them done badly uh, so let me maybe just check how many of those are there that we've already migrated and i'm saying it's not that bad um, Um, but still could be 
that should be done in one pass, uh, I would say. So now we either can migrate a new one uh, or we can invest in uh, Micronic Dose. Um, let me think about it for a bit. So uh, I will do that and I will do that not on record uh, because it's going to be super boring. Uh, so let's make a ticket for it and um, I will work on it when I will be bored. Uh, so, uh, translate model attributes in English. more consistent and readable. Um, of course, if, uh, if anyone wants to volunteer, um, this is a perfect good first issue. If you have an idea um, about uh, how Django works, uh, since you want to depend on it, well, I mean, it is strictly not necessary uh, for moving. Um, but I would like to do it as soon as possible because otherwise you're working on those uh, and uh, the problem just gets harder and harder uh, for the refactoring. Uh, especially since uh, we don't have a you know, steady compiler uh, that would check all the attributes across the board. Uh, so let's have this open and um, talk with people about it. And um, let's take a look about those skills. So and I mean it's uh, it's, it's uh, the same thing that we are actually doing with. Um, class names, um, because as I'm migrating them, uh, I'm translating them. Um, so it's just going down to column level. Um, so are we inheriting from trans... no. We are inheriting from creation, okay. So uh, let's double check what all is there. Um, so this is actually where having stuff side by side helps. Um, and having short Well, uh, sh uh, short names. <laughs> so, can I go and create for creation? I can't. Okay. Also, of note, uh, all of this, uh, all of the text fields has to be misencoded field because that's how it's stored. So, um, name is covered, author, uh, and uh, all of those. Are covered. Date printed. Number of stars covered. Voting. Red. Um. I. I'm now not sure about this field. Voted. Uh, what does it do? Um, 
because it's it sounds like something that I have uh, mistakenly deleted from other creations even though I shouldn't or uh, it is specific it seems to be specific uh, for this model so let's take a look what is it used for So that is this is potentially something to check uh, in the database and um, delete. Uh, so in here, in here it's not used um, as a database column. I mean, um, so let's add it to the to do. Check in database lots um, because if everything um, is null, then I would say we're good. And also, let's uh, make a distinction that this is. separate from uh, making those public this is potentially chore okay so um, what do we have here is uh, oh it should be misencoded text field and it's not from models um, so that's what we are going to use for. We can't apply it globally. And also, have we been using for some of you? It's no, and it accepts the same. Okay. Um, so all of those are uh, game attributes. Uh, it's taken directly from the rules. Uh, and it's mostly about, uh, you know, Basic targets for dates. Uh, text field, also text fields. Um, so let's just clarify that we have. This is my son code, it's the char field. Also this, um, so Scopinel, uh, which is like a group um, to which this belongs, uh, this is potentially enum. We, I mean, it, yeah, it is a fixed enum. Uh, it is. It, it, it could also potentially be um, another table and something to be uh, edited by editors, uh, but it is prescribed by the, by the rules. So, um, in case of uh, like, it doesn't need to be um, literally configurable. Like, I think code changes are fine. Um, but let's also uh, mark it as an issue. Um, this is also a good first issue uh, if someone wants to work on it. And uh, also total housekeeping. Um, 
So let's put this to the end uh, since we have no idea. Individual is fixed and the class should be skills. Uh, I don't know whether this is covered in dictionary. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, it's not, so the velocity is skills. And we have also talked about uh, a bit of which translates as graveyards. Um, so this is going to be fun mainly for the purpose of migrating the managed. So. Creations. This is not consistent. So I do wonder why have I done? Why have we done that? I, I mean, I. <laughs> why have I done that? And what was the algorithm? Because once we are, once we are here. Then the skills should be migrated to managed, and uh, this should be fitting the database structure. Um, so let's take a look. And this calls for uh, uh, make migration, I think. Um, make migrations. Create model skills is fine. Uh, the rest of it's not sure if. So we depend on photoglare, it's fine. Alter model options going to manage false, I think. That sounds cool. Uh, changing verbose models, that's okay, and I have no idea why we haven't done that. Um, changing the manage for level system params, um, that should be false all the way, so that's uh, because we have screwed up uh, the options, but Altering fields of photo. Um, what are we creating that from? On photo gallery, what is it here? Misencoded text field, and we are moving it to text field. Um, I don't think this is correct, it should go the other way. Um, so we definitely don't want to squash those uh, migrations together. Uh, so I propose committing this, uh, this being a uh, model migration uh, and the dictionary update and getting back to it. Uh, so what 
without the migration because we are going to resolve um, this make migration separately and that, uh, then let's go back to this um, so 53 was it um, well so far it's chore uh, migrates skills model document dictionary uh, we're going to revise history later on uh, so 53 let's push this uh, go back to master let's just verify we're up to date on this one and um, let's create a new branch on this um, it's good to be super careful with migrations like I mean you're programmatically updating your database uh, that's not fun to get wrong uh, so let's uh, remove the migration we've just made um, and make a new migration uh, right typo and see what was there that we want uh, no no that's not what I wanted to click um, kill this file definitely not save it Kill it with fire. I'm sorry. Um, I don't even want to restore it from trash. Just put an apple on it. I'm sure. Um, so, common article for both names is fine. Uh, Having a level system params as false. Where is this coming from? Uh, we put it into users. Yes, but are we actually using it? So one thing is that this um like akin to other uh, uh akin to the other fields that we have already migrated um this should not go to false and we have already run migrate uh, with this on production um but not with the migration specifically uh, specifically specifying this so possible that we had code and migrations inconsistent uh, so let's just take a look when we have introduced this um, and um, that can e be either done uh, using git blame in editor if it supports it uh, if not then uh, I would have to configure it, so let's take a look at GitHub. I mean, it's uh, relatively easy. Uh, so, users that buy there. Um, models. And blame is what we're looking for and we know it's us uh, so no hard feelings to anyone uh, well us being me being me so no hard feelings um, 
and it was on in splitting use model, so crap. Two years ago, which means that we've lost blame because if it was uh, with the same fixed attribute before. And whatever. I missed the diff on a file that was deleted. Where is it? Here. Um, so, this is from the very early years and it had managed false as well. Uh, so, no high confidence in this one. Um, can I view a file there? Yep. And show blame on that one, whether it's there for from day one or not. My guess would be yes, but let's verify. Yep. Oh, this is from initial initial. But for some reason... We have correctly set it in the initial migration. And we have mistakenly hard-coded it with manage false. So that's the problem. Uh, so it should be easy to just... Uh, it, it should be safe to just delete the managed. Uh, so that's one thing. Um, should TM. So let's do that. Uh, so committing on that with all migration. Yep. Uh, code it. Uh, it falls from level system. Params should be taken care of by the uh, default migration, which is also something we should do for the new model we are migrating, uh, by the way. Um, and we should probably also document the migration procedure. Um, again, to recap why the heck is there, uh, it is because if uh, the migration is used. Um, on an application that is using the original preceded database, then uh, we don't want the legacy tables uh, to be created on their own because they are there. And since they haven't been migrated, they may contain wrong columns, uh, non existing tables, it may fuck up the database. But uh, if you would want to use this uh, application from scratch without any data, then it needs to be managed through. Uh, so uh, it correctly creates the database and you're actually able to use the application without uh, uh, having to put in uh, the database structure dump uh, that is not publicly available, um, at least yet. Uh, but probably not because it's also for the custom MySQL. So. Um, People may not appreciate it. Uh, well, I like be able to load it because code archaeology. Uh, better to fix it so we are able to uh, use it on a modern uh, MySQL. So this shouldn't done anything, TM, and we should be able to delete it from the migration, uh, and it should not reappear uh, when we run it again. Uh, the photo gallery should definitely be using misencoded text fields uh, unless there's something I don't know. Um, it also, I mean, it sh also shouldn't contain uh, any misencoded character because it's a Unix path, and although people in Unix path shouldn't be using uh, special characters. In our system, it is technically possible. Uh, Unix path uh, can be full of terrible, 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 terrible stuff, um, but it shouldn't be our case. So, um, not what you should rely on if you're uh, doing widely available system. Pro tip, um, but 
for a gallery should be misencoded text fields uh, as any other nice and reasonable uh, migrated models. Again, when you fuck up, fuck up consistently. Uh, so that was uh, for the gallery, right? Let's also commit it as a fix. Well, actually not fields, but uh, let's clarify that this is about paths. So let's push this stuff one by one so we know whether we haven't fucked up circle um, or the application actually. And this is finally committable, I think. Uh, oh no, common article. Same managed false problem. Uh, but the rest of it should be committable as fixing the verbose names, verbose names, uh, which is fine. And I, I have no idea why it needs to be committed, because this this should only affect um, like in code attributes. I'm not aware of this being serialized anywhere or cached uh, in uh, in admin, but um, maybe I'm wrong on that one. But let's also take a look at the uh, common article um, because I don't think that this is something that we want to migrate either. And if I'm not mistaken, it was the one that was excellently hard coded as well, right? Yeah. And this should be taken care of in the in, uh, initial migration as well. So let's verify that. Uh, so that's common article. Um, yeah. So fix. This should be green as well, TM. Uh, so now we can remove this part. Uh, commit this migration. Give it a sensible name, actually. And uh, then we can go back to our original program. Uh, so Let's just uh, name it properly so we don't have just the big big bag of auto migrations uh, as we did before. So twenty and the name would be um, verbose name migration at least verbose names. Let's buy. Um, cool. So now, if we do make migrations, uh, nothing should happen. Ta da! Let's see what went wrong. Uh, also, meanwhile, actually, let's see whether the circle is still chewing green. Alas. At least some green. Ah, okay. Why we are altering fields here? What's going on? 
Uh, sorry. Even I do sometimes have a reflex of clicking faster than uh, reading. So we are altering field for common articles to misencode it. So we're doing the level system parameters where we have just um, removed the hard coded managed. Um, that's probably fine. Uh, but why the common article is suddenly being altered? Is, is it because we have incorrectly added the seat? Like it was managed. Hmm. The potential there is that it was uh, because it was incorrectly marked as managed false. Uh, we have incorrectly fucked it up and uh, now it's trying to catch up and it's redoing all the migrations um, that would happen if we would also incorrectly uh, migrate it to manage false somewhere um, in which case, um, let's see in what migration so we have used the common article. Hmm. Wait, so are you saying that common article is not in the... any few models? It is. It is also under the name of uh, common articles. So let's see. So, for example, author email. Uh, is there something shorter? Dates, date time field. Oh, but without the correct parameter. Without the auto at now. Um, number of stars. Misencoded character field, which we have moved to misencoded integer field. So there have been indeed changes uh, that we haven't created migrations for. Well, fuck. I mean, let's fix it then. Um. And let's make it separately from the level system parameters because those um, 
where we apparently need to do missing code it fix. Um, so let's rename this. Um, Twenty one. Uh, Common article attributes migration. Um, so there is one, and the other one is going to be, and I think that we can give it a name. Uh, so, well, actually, <laughs> no, before we do. Uh, let's take a look at that user and correctly give that missile code it. So this should be uh, misencoded uh, correct a field and this as well. fix level system parameters I do have a bad feeling that this is not doing what it says it's doing um, but let's sort that out afterwards okay so we do have quite a few no of new migrations not happy about it. Um, this almost calls for a CI check. Like, if there are outstanding uh, migrations, just fail. At least in master. Um, so maybe that's a case for those pipelines. Okay, so now the make migrations should do nothing. I mean, um, yes. Cool. Uh, so Let's commit those as uh, good job, basically, because it's not consistent uh, with anything else. Push it, and also what should be paying attention for? I'm mainly nervous about nervous about those. Um, I do wonder why we need misencoded integer field. But uh, maybe that is right because, um, yeah, you know, we were young and uh, some of those underlying uh, integer fields are actually declared as var variable character field um, in, the, uh, in the database. So, That's hence the difference. Uh, also, if you hear background noise, it's, uh, we went directly from a sunny day to raining. Uh, it's fun. Okay, so let's migrate our local database. And see whether if we reload. I mean our local uh, version um, to which we need to run the server I assume um, I mean authors are showing up uh, this was the most important part Mm. 
that works. Um, well, a bit nervous about production, but one way um, to verify it. This deserves a pull request, though. Uh, this deserves a paper trail. Uh, so let's fix migrations. And deserves just a review this look, just for a sec. Uh, so we are pushing in meta options, we are pushing in the field options on the common article. And the model options, we are correctly fixing the misencoded, and that's it. And removing the managed. Possible. Well, um, you know, would be easy to ignore, but um, that is the difference. Um, how to call it between being a diligent programmer, <laughs> uh, like following out on, on everything and um, kind of discussing the trade-offs of not following. Um, but um, I think that you almost, the rule of thumb is that in case of a database you always want to follow, um, because if you ignore, you can really have fucked up data. And that can get super expensive very, very quickly. Um, not necessarily in case of fun server, but even there, you know, nobody, um, nobody is happy to lose data. Which is why I do have a Mongo t-shirt, um, just for fun of it. So, let's see. It is that. Uh, it was not rebasing on top of anything, so let's start with the deploy. Mm, and hope for the best. That's the advantage of working on front end. Um, you never have to care about data migrations. In which also, uh, just in case you would be considering being a data scientist, um, be aware that 80% of the job is uh, data cleanup. Um, doing cool uh, R stuff on top of that, or you know, uh, whatever multi-cluster requests, that's a minority. Uh, unless you work at a corporation with super clean data, uh, which is super rare. Uh, but when you do, that's also, you know, if you're a data scientist at Facebook, um, you write code, you put something in the cluster, um, and then have an app because, you know, data's coming back in a day or like in an 18 hours, uh, so set an alarm to, set, uh, to 6 a.m. Um, to work for an hour and continue. So um, it can get sucky pretty quickly everywhere. I mean, as any job, but um, uh, this delayed uh, results common for data scientists and um, super annoying. So, master caught up. Um, we are almost there. Um, I'm not doing it uh, anything in parallel with the uh, database migration, <laughs> except you, of course. Um. So, uh, 
migrations okay. No issues detected. Um, so let's right. Uh, let's connect. Take a look. Um, call that process because I suck at ops and uh, see what happens production seems like nobody died so that's cool in which case um, Let's move back to that branch uh, where we are actually migrating the model and rebase it on top of master. Um, also of note, uh, we have merged the branch. Uh, let's delete the branch properly. I had a software for that. I uh, should use it again. So, um, now if we do migrations, um, we should correctly have the model skills. Is it in that initial model? Because I believe it should be. Uh, although not under the name skills, uh, but nasty. And what we are doing for all of those, uh, if you've noticed, is that. Uh, not setting the database seeded uh, for the reasons that I've described. Uh, so uh, for that one, let's fix it. And because we haven't done it, this is a new. Is this a new model or? Is this altering? Yeah, create model. Uh, no, no, no. That already happened in the initial migration. So, not what we want. And uh, we have fixed the initial model. So now we hopefully should have a uh, alter model. Except it hasn't correctly determined uh, that I have a uh, recreating model. So, never mind. Uh, and let's do this in two passes then. So, first one is uh, let's. Keep the name of the model. Make a migration. Alter all the fields. That's correct because this was the misencoded field um, that we've been doing um, and then fix the model name which hopefully now should be recognized let's see Decided. 
so this should give us a migration where no alter commands is going to be sent. Um, I mean, yes, I did. And where is my migration? Come on, chop, chop. Reload. Uh, no F5. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yep. So let's have this as a separate commit. Uh, something tells me. Um, my grid skills model. Uh, I think that documentation uh, should go into the details. All right. Uh, Migrates close model. Um, and is it a chore? Yeah, it is a chore. So now let's move on to actually displaying that. Um, so again, this will need. Uh, this will need to be in the. Uh, pages and it will have its own model so primary key will be 14 name will be skills slack will be also skills because it's publicly available and model class will be skills because we have rena renamed the model properly. Uh, hmm. Is it going under the creative page? Yes. Um, let's see whether it will work correctly. So, uh, moving on to URLs. Uh, how will we show this? Uh, so, creative page slug, creation detail, that should be all set up. Um, So may the maybe the only thing that we actually need is templates. So creative pages. So and this is more similar to monster list. So let's take it and put it under um, scale. We a mistake I believe we're using singular um, and I think that I've used plural right and we haven't done the migration yet locally have we no uh, so there is still time for remediation uh, and that is for the model name. So the new name is going to be skill, not skills. Um, and it's not legacy anymore, it's used. This is ridiculous. Uh, let me cause the. Sh oh, I don't have to cause the shades. Uh, it's not going into the camera anymore, uh, it's just going on me. 
Uh, so here's this creation, uh, but uh, what is really cool is the weather change here. It's fun. Uh, so we have skill list. Uh, what if we put in pages also? Yeah, skill. Uh, we should also commit this. And we have had the migration in the previous, so let's just not commit everything since we have done edits, but uh, just migrations. Um, well, migrations and model. Because we need to uh, Add the rename migrations dictionary. Yep. Alright, so this works. Okay, so now we can add um, pages. Right, and the skill list. So, um, also of notes. Uh, let's open this in next to the view and skill list. Yeah, we're going for the page concepts. Um, we're paginating articles. Is creation detail. Uh, articles like all of this is same, but attributes will vary. Uh, that is the thing. Uh, so group is also the same. And now we go. And we should keep the same order as we do on production ideally. Um, also let's put this in the new skin. But apparently, switching the skin doesn't always work. So, oh, and also we have a different view on what we are showing here. Um, for some reason. So the question is whether we should keep that or not. Um, this is something that's not consistent in the old version on production. Um, there are two ways how to display articles. Uh, one is like in table. Um, the other one is uh, more complete, so less stuff on page, but it should display more information about what is actually in. Um, and as you can see, for example, uh, for monsters, uh, if you go to the complete list, uh, then it's like the whole thing. Whereas for skills, uh, it is not that. It's just uh, an annotation. So this is a product decision. Like, what should we unify on? Um, Yeah, it should be what is important. I, I would say that the text shouldn't be there uh, because uh, some creations can always be long and then, you know, you're making the page unusable. But I would say that we should put in more than is here. So, what would be it? Um, also of notes, uh, this should mean, this should be enough uh, for us to make a link and see how this would look like. So uh, let's see, 
let's go back to that public template and uh, oh, sorry let me close this well not close but move on for a sec move off screen for a sec I'm not hiding, I just need space. <laughs> um, so here it is. Uh, so, skills and skills and uh, reload on the local version. that we are not running so no creative page how much is the query because we haven't loaded pages um, that is the one um, no we are in the we are fortunate enough to be in the virtual environment and not having to mess up with the Docker cluster. Yep. So of course this is terrible. Uh, I think also is displayed because it's uh not using the uh monster attributes obviously. Um, as I'm saying, I will totally call this one. Uh, what is it on production again? Um, so, huh, one thing was edit was edit edit since we've taken a look last time. Um, Slightly different layouts. That's okay. Uh, we don't have groups here, it seems. That is rare, but again, that is prescribed by uh, rules, so... Let's also remove that one, that will be on top, I guess. Yep. Um. I would agree that author is more impor more important than it should be. Higher. Well, going back and forth because um, in most articles it's like signature, right? You want to have it at the end. Um, but in here there are quite a few of you know known authors, and People are sometimes orienting themselves uh, based on that, so I would keep it down at the detail, uh, but I would move it up here. Um, and then uh, what else would be deemed significant for skills? Not much, but I would put in the attribute uh, because that I think is the one people may filter on. Um, so let's put in this and kill the rest. 
that I've been too eager to copy paste. Okay. Uh, and then um, the discussion is something that we should put in uh, over time. Um, okay, so I think this works actually. Uh, it also kind of scales. Uh, how does it scale in the production version? Which was always more tight. Let's call it a large margin, but otherwise similar, uh, just smaller. Also know that I'm 110 at 110% um, without it. It looks like this. Um, so maybe a bit more margin over there, but it, we can fix global afterwards. Uh, so I would say this is sufficient. Uh, so let's fix the detail. Uh, so. For that, the monster detail actually will be a better um, templates. So, skill detail HTML. And we'll oh, 404. I always love that. <laughs> um, also, we are not aligning correctly. How did I see it? How did I see it? And this looks better. This is aligning to the center for some reason. So let's take a look at the CSS, but let's just fix first uh, what is this plate. And also, I think that you're not. We do say description, okay. Going back and forth on whether that's a good design. Uh, I mean, none of this is good design per se, but you know what I mean. So, um, probably need only one as a template. And. Um, let's go in the order of production. So uh, it's going to be dots, this one, and the attributes. Uh, this should also be in the template, so we will know if you fucked up. And it's one, two, two, four, six. Seven of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I bet Vim has a better way of handling this, but uh, so property uh, uh, I think that all of those are actually mandatory, uh, but it's still bad. I mean, it's better to be defensive in case it fucks up the whole template. Uh, so, uh, the problem. Oh, and I'm going actually by the attributes instead of production. Uh, huh, never mind. Uh, but um, yeah, not programming for a while means that uh, I haven't been uh, setting up my editor properly for a while. Uh, also, it seems that actually the order is the same. Uh, so not much thought was put into those. Um, 
so this is um, describing the dice rolls what happens if you succeed and don't succeed Except for how it's, um, you know, displayed. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Also, we are insisting on. Yeah, I, I think so. This is like the outer header. Um, I do agree. I would move it down. Like people should be primarily interested in the article uh, as opposed to. for which I have a duplicit header then and uh, I think that this should just go down because this is was outer when it also edits that should go down although for some reason that's a table whereas everything else is a list um, I don't think that's correct uh, also actually let me Let me put it here. Uh, sorry, just just But um, that's the reason why it wasn't uh, displayed properly. Also, right, I think command save would help. Um, I mean, is it working? And um, for the monster category? It does not, so maybe someone should be paying more attention, uh, someone being me. Um, is there any, anywhere else we have this? No. Okay, so no, t no CSS for those. Um, so in that case, let's move on to my uh, least favorite part of frontend. So labels, labels for article headers should be bold, I would say in general. So what do we say about this? We could potentially go and move on to some preprocessor, uh, but I'm just of an opinion that, uh, you know, I like the cascading style sheets uh, themselves. I think that like in the, uh, in the, you know, overall, uh, 
scheme of things. Uh, with like with the modern browser that supports the modern features, and I think that you know we are reasonably we can um, attract a reasonably modern uh, audience. Like um, not that. I, I like compatibility, uh, so I would like the stuff to display on all browsers. Um, but you know, if styling is off, I think that's a reasonable trade off. Mm. I mean, reasonable t trade off compared to having a gazillion of uh, Webpack preprocessors and uh, you know, a few megabytes of sh shivers and. Uh, all this stuff that in the end can make the, the experience uh, pretty slow um, especially if you've been in an area that has slower internet um, it doesn't have to be you know a village or a third world country uh, just go to Australia then you know how painful it can be uh, or VPN from China for that matter um, so let's just say that um, What was it? Uh, it was in detail. So, article header label. So, article header label. Uh, this needs. Putting in those rights or not? What is it complaining about? Do not use empty rule sets. Article header element class label. I think that it works and I don't think that it needs to be a direct descendant. And a bolt is. But font I'm always lost in those um, font weight bolt happy now happy now happy now Also comparably, actually, um, this would look better like a table. <laughs> if you take a look at this, and I don't know what's more readable. I mean, this definitely looks more readable. Uh, I'm just thinking in the context of what you're displaying. But although I think that this is reasonable to have, um, maybe let's go for the table like display for all of it. Uh, and it's, it's, I mean, semantically, it's not a table. Um, also, it's questionable. It's questionable whether this is a uh, header of the article or part of the content. Um, I would actually argue that this may be part of the content. It's just not only text, um, but it makes sense. Um, And the uh, outer table that should not be table is a footer. That is that is not part of the text. Uh, but uh, semantically, this is. The name is a header. I mean, let's take a look. Um, and 
let's talk to authority. Which means not the best three schools. Where is the HTML5 standard? Come on. So if page header is loose inside, it's not actually this is okay, that's fine. Um but what are the rules about header and footer content complementary content this is not it um, not much guidance This is the problem of uh, SEO. MDN is a good resource as well, but like WSBC schools, not so much. <coughs> well, it's not section content, it does not introduce any section in the outline. And the usual contain the surrounding section heading. Surroundings. Okay, but not required. Uh, hmm. Article header. Also, okay. This makes sense. Um, okay, so in this case, I th I would argue that this goes into the body um, because it's part of what defines this. Uh, so this definitely goes into the footer. Um, but this totally goes into the content. Uh, so header ends here and this is the content. Uh, yeah. to which there is no uh, the notation tag. Okay, uh, so we're close, but um, let me have a break for a sec. Uh, so we will be back in 10 minutes, I think, or more like five. Uh, so see you soon. All right, so welcome back everyone. Uh, after some additional mumbling and um, Let's finish this template. Um, there we go. Okay, so um, labels versus tables. Um, I do you know that we had a class for displaying table-like things? I think it was for the purpose of gallery. Oh cool, snow now. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, so when we have a list uh, with a container that's called table like I do wonder whether all of it needs to be table like um, or we will put the display underneath but I mean in the original version the, all of it is table like so let's work with that yeah this kind of works. Uh, quicker than expected. Um, yeah, the, the difference is just the font size. If you would make it larger. Larger. 
then that works. Uh, we don't have this printable CSS. Uh, we have a bug for that. Also contributions welcome. Uh, uh, this is production. Uh, I mean, no, new production. So, yeah, this displays roughly equally. Uh, the only obvious difference is the uh, display, and that is because everywhere, uh, everywhere else it's span, here it's diff. Why? If it's a paragraph, uh, wait, and also we are saying text instead of description. So this may be the reason why we are off. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, I am actually changing it, you know, anyone? Yep. And this went off. So do we want to display this footer in a table like structure? I would say so, let's keep it consistent. I mean, um, and uh, for that purpose, for that purpose, um, let's also redo the stuff that's below it. I mean above it. Uh, so uh, it's ah. um right. So we don't, yeah, we don't need the span. We can, I think, do it on the time attribute itself. Uh, let's see. And the class, the class should be value. No, no, I don't want the MDN reference this time. I have slightly changed the format because I consider it more readable. I mean, uh, more aligned with the Czech typography. I'm just actually wondering whether the white space is there or not. Um, let me Google it. Uh, because we have our own international uh, rules, of course. Yes, um, it is correctly that we should have that there should be a white space after um, the dots in the date. Um, And 
there should be dot instead of um, column which is interesting um, and this is from 2018 so and there should be a thin white space wow okay and it looks reasonably well researched uh, so let me also um, look at it Huh, it really seems like that. So there, okay, so both are an option, uh, there is a norm for that. Um, but actually the correct form with a, is with a dot. And the question is whether we should be using uh, seconds, like does it make sense to have seconds for uh, something that's like, you know, published So really, and I would say no. I think that this makes sense for the discussions, but not for the articles. Um, I mean, there even the time kind of maybe doesn't make sense. Um, so let's put it this way. And also let's see whether I could use this uh, thin uh, this uh, MSB uh, in there. So this should be the correct, correct, correct form. Right. Except of this is escaped. Um, Hmm. Why? Right, because it it is uh, interpreted as a special character, like uh, uh, as you know, J being J. Um. I mean, can I escape it? can but then ampersand is interpreted as ampersand not cool um, uh, yeah ten SP and that's not correctly interpreted even here. Wow. Uh, and also if you have noticed the uh, value in time is fucked up as well. This calls for an issue. So let's put it back first. Um, do it without the thin break and make any show of it. Uh, so correctly display times. 
As I am saying, everything is more complicated if you dig into it. <laughs> For the so for commands, chats, uh, etc. Also, good first issue for someone. This should go before this is public public. Um, okay, so we do have time somewhere. To have this correctly aligned, yeah. Except for the table, let's finish reformatting this table. Uh, so this has moved on, and uh, here is also of note, uh, and also let's make it a separate small issue. I'll correctly unify uh, the usage of uh, the um, table versus list. Uh, unify what uh, tables of is without tables and should be used everywhere. Uh, so this is going to be good first issue. Ah, so it is semantical enhancements. Um, Technically not needed. Technically not needed. Um, all right, and this is for uh, gosh, no. This should be span and this is a good way to make everything complicated. Uh, yep, slash span slash p. How is it looking? So one additional thing is that um, you know for those new sections uh, we don't have any test like any browser test. Um, question is whether it's worth doing that. 
I, I mean, uh, you know, it is basically about putting in configuration, uh, but there is one thing where it's helpful, and that is that um, if you're going to be doing those refactorings, like knowing whether we haven't fucked up uh, the, you know, for example, templates, and we're we're not blowing up uh, the whole thing, that I would consider useful. Uh, so I think that at least sanity check um, and uh, you know having a test, uh, ha having a test uh, object uh, for that with all um, fields being filled in, or I mean at least some of them. Uh, sorry, this was my mobile phone. Uh, would be useful. Uh, so I think that given we ha have the infrastructure set up, and uh, while we all, while we are looking at those. Uh, where we are looking at those mm, attributes and everything, um, I think it's worth doing for future refactoring. Uh, so uh, let's commit this um, and verify it. And I have no idea where have I put uh, my messaging. So I hope it's not urgent. Um, I mean, 5 p.m. Uh, who would have been doing anything urgent, right? Um, also of note, let me actually later on go to Sentry and uh, mark the problem we had as solved. Uh, potentially while we're deploying this. Uh, so maybe, well, we're, but we have decided to deploy all of this at the same time. I mean, we haven't. We can have this as a working program request and then still work on this branch. Uh, so maybe let's do that. Um, so this looked reasonably working. Um, it, wait, this looks weird. Uh, and it looks weird um, because of how this is overflowing and it's not using the full width. Um, how does it look on production actually? Uh, if we go back, back. Uh, something that's longer. Wait, it was the one before. Um, yeah, it's correct here. So why are we losing? I mean, there is a table, uh, like even semantically, which you don't want to do. Um, um, but you're. Correctly having got so uh, table like content. Right, this is the this is the problem. Mm. Um, so the problem is that you're uh, relying on spawn, you know, class and value, which makes sense uh, for the purpose of um, those short blurbs, uh, where there is no HTML, we expect no HTML. Uh, but for the description, people can put in their own text, uh, and it, it is expected to be longer. Uh, so it is. it actually contains paragraphs. Um, and all the other stuff, which means that it can't be, uh, you know, put inside a paragraph and then inside a span, because uh, there is no such thing as nested, nested paragraphs in uh, in HTML. So uh, I guess one of the workarounds could be um, to put this into a diff. And then both of those needs to be this as well. 
which I'm not sure how it will roll out um, because that's how we want to align the blocks uh, so let's see how that works and I'm afraid that we would need we need also to put the class on this one um, so let's call it a description row because that's what it is um, so when we have table like So table like P would be a table row only for a direct descendants of a table like that shouldn't break anything. Um, and then if you're correct correctly labeling this as label and value which we do then we just need to also have a description row uh, as a table row and we should be good um, so it's either table table like and paragraph or uh, table like and description row Very good. Cool. Uh, if you don't get why it works, ask. <laughs> but uh, we have effectively converted the diffs to the corresponding uh, block elements. So, no idea how much that is of a best practice. Uh, but this should give us all we need for skills and for publishing them. So, um, are you on a correct branch? Yep. Uh, and the diff contains all we need, except we haven't added the new templates. So, uh, I have no idea what is the dash underscore user doing here. Why? Why? Anyway, um, must be the visual code thing. Um, so uh, add skills creative pages and that references our favorite ticket fifty three. Um, let's push this. And we have been amending stuff, so we need to do a first push. Um, that was the skills framing, if you remember. And check it out. Um, and we can totally do a work in progress pull request. Do not delete the branch and work on top of it. Uh, top of it. So. This was at a graveyard um, Oh there, let's see whether it contains something suspicious or missing something suspicious uh, like migrations So we have edited this page, we have edited seeds um, we have done all that weird migration stuff. We have added the detail. We have added the list. 
we have somehow cleaned up the HTML, um, although something to be desired. Uh, apply to a CSS, okay. So I would say this is good. Um, if circle says it's good. So let's wait for that. Uh, deploy, see whether the migration works. Uh, and uh, we will have time to do some more, I think. Let me take a look at uh, what our local train schedule looks like. So I think I have one and almost two hours, uh, but I will end a bit earlier um, to have time to some stuff before leaving. Um, okay, so one thing that we should do it it will be the um, will be the test that we've been talking about. I think uh, what is the workflow? Right. Uh, this is the new pipelines that we sh should potentially play with for the purpose of checks. So let's also make a ticket for that actually, because we haven't. Um, so. on master so this is one of those things that is uh, kind of important ish um, but nobody would mark them as important uh, but um, for me it is. Um, this is one of those, this is a safety check. Uh, this is a basic safety check, so... Delaying those, uh, everybody's delaying those until they do lose data. So, are we good? We're good. Uh, so let's go to master. Uh, merge it. Uh, push, of course. I really need to refurbish my automation to link. Uh -huh. And um, deploy. And while this is running, uh, let me do a quick break. I'll continue streaming uh, what is happening. Also, one thing that we could do is uh, automatically send this um, to the remote server. Basically, do this except for the final symlink uh, and migration, 
which um, I think that may actually help. Like, let's do that for master. Uh, prepare deploy. In its current form, um, it would not be good because it's uh, the the deploy process is uh, kind of um, at one point it's overriding the current code. I mean, moving it to backup so all the file descriptors work, but uh, restart of the process automatically deploys new version, which. It's not what we want to do um, for the purpose of the environment uh, rotation that I've set. Um, but it is solvable. So let's also do it as a ticket. Um, so like master builds. Don't have actual artifacts now. Um, This needs to be on me because uh, it is related to deployment and requires permission and stuff. Um, do I have a label for production? I don't, and we should have one, but. Uh, this is a house improvement uh, that's not needed, but saves time. Um, and I'm heavily into those you know, production improvements, so let's consider it later. Um, I think that we also want a CI, it seems. Uh, So new label. Uh, yeah. Let's not be cryptic. Um, well, continues delivery actually. or deployment. Blue is a good color for that. Although the best one would be uh, red, green and yellow at the same time. Um, so that and also infrastructure uh, because those are the ones that I need to take care of. Um, What would be a good color for that? The, I, I like this one big green. Uh, you know, so called vomit green. But um, I totally couldn't uh, put a coat on it without uh, a color picker. I'm not good at those. That one was also good, but uh, no, not green. Yeah, this one looks ugly. 
Um, so going back to the issue we've been at. Yeah. So. This is the one that should work. Okay. Um, maybe I should give up and let's just uh, grab this as part of deploy and um, make it automatically call. Uh, but I'm always kind of afraid because it's pretty hard to make this type of shell scripts uh, reliable and of course the best way would be to have the PID stored somewhere uh, which is exactly what the supervise uh, that um, we are talking to should do um, but it's not working for some reason and uh, I have to admit I'm kind of fed up of uh, deploying this infrastructure that uh, we want to abandon anyway uh, so let's take a look whether this is running and yeah, we're there. This looks aligned. This totally doesn't look uh, like what we wanted. And it is because description is in the description. Right, because it's run away. I. Uh, is it the random article we picked, or is it a pattern? It is a pattern. There is a pattern on production. I mean... Oh, what was the name of that? Uh, wait, am I looking at the right, yeah, skills? Um. Hmm. Stuff that's too new. Yes, uh, we've been looking at this. And here it doesn't work. And here it works. Uh, we deployed something else. <laughs> uh, we have applied migrations. The migrations are fine. Uh, let me restart the server. I know what may be happening. Um, so CSS and caches. Right, so uh, we had an old CSS cached. And people that go in uh, will have this problem uh, that until they hit command R it is not going to be invalidated and the reason is that we are relying on cache headers and we apparently don't have them set very well uh, so let's take a look and see in console um, what are actually the headers that we receive um, and huh. so I'm not sure what's going into which output, but we have unsupported protocol. What uh, do we actually download? I think no. more problems I 
it's weird that it's supported from the browser then um, but right this is actually uh, consistent with the warning we saw somewhere uh, somewhere about uh, safe I, I mean in the browser even uh, which is that the browser is complaining about the server certificate using old ciphers yeah um, but that's unfortunately not something we can fix easily um, because uh, I'm limited by the OpenSSL library version that I have there that I can't upgrade. So it is fixable for Sedex, uh, but it wouldn't be fixable for the server itself anyway. Um, so again, the best shot at this is to speed up. Uh, which sucks. Uh, so anyway, let's look at those headers. Um, Oh, sorry. Let's look at those headers uh, for HTTP as opposed to HTTPS. So we are getting an ETEC and last modified. So theoretically, I mean practically. Practically, the browser, the user agent, should be sending ETEC, and the server should be responding uh, with uncached version. The question is whether browser is sending ETEC all the time, and another question is. Uh, which is probably based on last modified. And the last modified looks roughly correct. And B is how the ETEC is computed, uh, whether Lite is using hashes or not. And um, I think that I have been making the Lite configuration public, but I'm not sure. Um, but if not, I don't think that there is anything that should be confidential. Uh, famous last words before I show API keys to the whole world, but... Um, I don't seem to be showing that, so just for the purpose of safety of those secrets, because I don't feel like ordaining everything right now. Um, let me take a look what's in there. Documentation for the let me actually let me get up. Um, so in which directory would we put that? Um, hmm. Documentation, I would say. Uh, after which we should also kind of include it. Uh, but. So docs, um, let's, let's see for uh, config, for config examples, uh, configurations, I guess. And in there, let's put um, light aim. Um, so this is what's powering, what's included in the main uh, 
by the HTTP configuration. Uh, so we redirect on HTTPS and otherwise proxy to the local Django server uh, that is handled separately using the run command. Um, but let me see what's in for static. And I have a feeling that it's not much. I, I mean... Um, so I, I can't find anything. Let me also take a look. I mean, let me uh, let me also take a look on where is the static server. So was it? What was it coming from? Uh, we have a host command. Yep. So it is on this server. Uh, so let me grab it whether I do have a sp special configuration somewhere. But I don't think I do. I think that this should, this should be just a separate host name. Um, that we are grabbing from. Yeah, no mention of that in the lighter config. Uh, so let me just take a look uh, if I have set in somewhere the um, like whether there is something explicit about the uh, static server serving. And uh, sorry to do that off record, but again, this this contains uh, where the private keys are and stuff like that. Um, I have a vague feeling that I've been setting this, but I haven't. So maybe this this deserves configuration uh, in order to fix it for the future. for the purpose of uh, this static file serving. Uh, so let's see whether this is handled somewhere so uh, I'm uh, I'm cautious about um, setting uh, the f you know access plus one month because uh, this works if you're uh, with every deploy or, or like with every uh, yeah with every deploy that changes static um, you change the file path uh, which actually uh, is a good setup if you have a multi-layer multi setup, uh, if you have uh, CDNs and whatnot. Uh, but this is not where we are, at least so far. Because it complicates the process quite a bit. Um, it basically requires you uh, to compute the suffixes and have them in environment variables. I do not refer to static files directly, uh, but through this dictionary. Um, it, I mean, it's not insurmountable, uh, but for what we're doing, I think that we should be uh, pretty good to um, just add uh, etext properly. Uh, 
so let's actually change what you're doing. Uh, wait. Um, configure at etec variable. So not necessarily three days, but also let's take a look at um, let me take a look uh, whether I do have mod etec uh, and whether it's built in or not. Um, but that we should know from the documentation, like official documentation. Um, I mean, okay. Oh, cache this etec. That looks plausible. Cache is gone there. I feel like a sponsor has it. So. So this is caches the result. Okay, uh, so this is not what you're doing. This is if someone is generating content and uh, wants it wants it to be cached on disk. Um, this is not what we want. Um, Right, this is for deflating now. Um, so it should be built in, but so let's do single configuration. So this is in core, cool. And the default value is all of that. Um, I mean, this should be good enough for us because uh, deploy changes and time. So this should work. So why hasn't it worked? <laughs> uh, and the answer to that may lie if we would be using that, uh, what is the name of the access three days? So let me just check whether I have a word access in the configuration. Because if this is set globally, I'm not sure how it interacts with, uh, whether it doesn't gain priority over uh, attack. That would be for, uh, Further research. So we don't have it on the 
in the main config we have it on particular sites. So this shouldn't be an issue. So let's pay attention to this on the next deploy. Um, and let's make maybe make that uh, maybe let's make the more complicated pipeline a priority. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unless we are going to figure it out correctly with the CDN. Hmm. This could be the. Uh, this also gets more complicated with HTTP two, which if you're going to use uh, CDN, that will get more complicated. Nevertheless, um, with refreshed caches, this works on production, so we can move on. Um, let me put back the terminal and I don't think this contains anything uh, anything that needs to be like really saved if you are to document the production update for the new version um, okay we have skills what was next? We have skills and a lot of side jobs. Uh, oh, let's make those last. This and this is going to be properly complicated. So let's move to items. Um, so, same procedure as before. Uh, let's put it into the, the dictionary though. Just to do edit configurations for me automatically. No, that's correct. That's what you want. Um, why are you freaking out, dude? I actually don't want the text. And um, no, don't you again. I will ask if I will need it. So, in the legacy, uh, we should have items, and we do. Uh, so, let's copy paste them uh, to the used creations. Feeling I have hit something. Right, clipboard. Uh, nope. Uh, creations at the end and without managed now. Uh, we are going to inherit from creation. Uh, also, before we forget, in the initial migration uh, let's look it up and properly reconfigure managed um, I don't think this is what I was wanting uh, <laughs> If I would be better at remembering things, then um, you know I could just move on with the databases seeded. But uh, since I'm not, and I'm apparently also bad at figuring out shortcuts, this is what I have to live with. Um, so this is manage based on is seeded now. Um, and this is what we have, so 
again. Uh, name goes out of the window. Outer dates. Source approval status. Printed and voting. Uh, a number of stars. Is description in or out? In. Okay. Um, so all of this is correct, except for uh, we need to change those to misencoded. So this is um, misencoded text field. This is misencoded char field. Char field. This is integer field, not um, it's not, not integer that is text, so that looks plausible. Uh, although I think it's actually wrong in terms of what could be in, but okay. All of those are integers, so that's fine. And this is again a um, encoded text field. So let's make a migration out of those. Um, without Docker Compose. And while edits, let's actually name it correctly. Um, so, Python um, manage make migrations uh, name is uh, items. And on the DDCZ app. So let's see what happens. Um, this is not working well. I do wonder whether it's because I have hit some limit. Uh, has it been created right? Yeah, 25. Um, Show me. So, you're altering options. Uh, we are adding field. That is weird. Altering fields to misencode it, that's fine. But, why do we adding red? And that is from creation, I guess. Yeah. Wow, so is it possible that um, for this one we are not tracking amount of people who read it? Which is ridiculous, by the way, I know. It doesn't account for colors and whatnot. Uh, but... Um, Something again, uh, it should be consistent. So, items wow, it looks like we don't indeed, and um. sake okay we don't for no reason in which case uh, I would argue let's edit let's just edit um, those people that would care would be set um, but um, you know for them, it's been a while, uh, a while ago. Um, right. What I the reason why I deleted it is that I just uh, want to take a look and uh, consider 
adding any initial value of zero, I'm making sure it's there, it is. Also, this is something that we are not doing yet, so um, let's also make uh, an issue for it. Um, and again, it's about sorting it consistently. So, uh, tracking. Wait. Uh, So let's either follow uh, original way or figure out a consistent uh, that's better actually. Um, not strictly needed for evac potentially, but it's one of those like ones that I would like. Um, this is also good for, I mean, the decision is not, but uh, the knife implementation is a good first issue. Uh, so if someone would like to help, uh, they're welcome. So, this is there. I don't need previous. I have previous in my head. Um, so this works, and now let's rename it. So it's items. Item. Um, I'm actually thinking whether this is not confusing. Because item uh, is like overused everywhere. Let me turn on some lights. Um, hmm. You know, item is a very generic name. So, uh, it could be creation item, it could be game item. Let's call it game item. Um, one of those cases where actually the dictionary is useful. Uh, so, game item. So, uh, I'm thinking whether there is a better description, but I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I think this calls for... This calls for a domain-specific name to prevent confusion. Um, one of those things. So let's make a migration for that. Uh, so I have frame items to name item. I'm sure about it. So we do have a database sorted out. Um, Let's move on. I think that this can be a, a simple commit. We have it under our hood now. Uh, so pages. Um, it is creative page again. Number 15. Name is... Well, public name uh, is still items <clears throat> have I 
I did the plural thing again. No, I haven't got. So this is uh, I did a plural thing here in Czech though. And um the thing is that you're using Slack mostly for the URL where it should be plural. So actually let's follow this pattern for time being. This one is fortunately easily changeable. Um Okay, we have the pages, so let's load them. And let's just create a template. Well, um, let's first. It's near and scroll items. This is an interesting localization aspect because um, check works with certain words differently. Uh, we have those cases where we are using plural for singular. Uh, for describing certain things or things. Uh, so that's a list and we can follow the skill list is our newest and shiniest format. Uh, so it's uh, game item list. And a single word versus plural bothers me. Uh, let's call the public version. Yeah, I think that this is the last thing we're going to do today. So, items. Uh, right, so we need to run the migration locally in this case because we are referring to the field that was not created. Uh, so now if we fix stuff we have to work on top of it, uh, not like last time. Also what branch I'm on. Those should be this should be same commit so it should be fine but uh, so migrate fuck uh, data too long for column strymail hetero to what data uh, I mean, one easy way, uh, one easy workaround would be to remove the red now, but um, what the fuck and where the fuck? So this is the migration, most probably this one. It is the last one. And 
does it mean that someone is potentially hitting just the limit just because we encode it differently? No idea, one way to find out. So is there a way to get the actual uh, SQLs printed? about skills Humph. if we would take a look at the initial migration then this is where we should see Oh, it is striped text field. Never mind. Uh, so this should be misencoded uh, text field, and most probably this one. Also of note, why? <laughs> so an email with a unlimited uh, character number um, that all probably requires data cleanup inspection on its own um, but uh, let's also take a look what what we do have here uh, creation Well, well, fuck. So actually what we should do before running this is to migrate everything to text field. To unify, because we have no idea what is the longest one. Which I mean, not great, not terrible. Do it on the production database. Um, hope for the best. Inspect it afterwards. Cool. So let's make this in a separate branch. Um, not items, but again items. Um, go back. Migrate this into misencoded text field. I don't believe I'm doing this. Uh, make migration and call it a source as text. Right. 
right. Uh, no, let's remove this. Uh, go back to previous branch. Ah, sorry. This is what you get when you're used to Linux clipboards. Uh, yeah, let's stage this. Get back. Add the forgotten migrations. Amend them to the previous commit. Uh, so we get rid of them. Go back. Now we can apply that. Uh, now we can make the migration with the name. That migrates all the existing fields. Um, yep. Oh, let's commit this and actually deploy it and see what happens on production. Uh, text and uh, this is needed uh, for some tables that do that and have I have a weird feeling we're doing this uh, only because of one item somewhere. But hey. Um, let's also push this directly to master. Uh. So. Let's also go to master and pull it, I mean. Okay. I thought I will have time for stuff, but hey. <laughs> cool. I just still do 30 minutes, so. Um. So let's wait for circle for this one. Phew. I mean, who did that? No questions, everybody's frustrated. I do have an understanding for it. Um, or spaced out. I'm starting to as well. Um, what is the time? Two minutes, okay. That should be done soon. That goes for last then. Oh. It's actually faster, interestingly. I do wonder whether it's pre warm uh, cache or. Oh no, I've been just scrolling badly. Um. Well, I'm actually, uh, actually at least grateful that it's semi-reproducible and it's a framework doing that. Um, because, of course, one of the reasons this is so flawed and um, so um, inconsistent is that um, the way we've been doing that was, you know, point and click in PHP MyAdmin, like running commands manually. So if you forgot what you did on the other place or um, made a typo, that's what you've been living with. Um.
Okay, success. So let's deploy this. And see whether migration killed someone. If not, then I would move on directly. Uh, because it will require an archaeology to find uh, something that was created so long ago. And uh, also, I don't actually think that we're properly displaying that in the new version. Um, so that will require further research. This is the part where I tend to do stuff on the site. Okay, migration went fine. In which case, um, let's move to that branch, whatever it was. It was not new CP. It was add game items. And uh, let's release on top of master. Or, I mean, um, and this would give us conflict, or should give us conflict with regards to migrations. Um, so, we'd have items as well as sources text, so we should bump it by one. Uh, has it shown using the rename, or was it... Um, Part of the skills. It was part of the skills, right? Uh, I mean, skills items. Sorry, confused. Um. Yes, this was the problem. So. Let's do this from scratch. Uh, so let's remove the number twenty five items and the twenty six to rename. Let's rename back um, so this is reco um, so this is recognized. Now we can make migrations. Uh, we can even name it properly this time. Um, this is adding the add field correctly. And the... Mm -hmm. 
game items last one should go to miss and code the text field automatically <coughs> as opposed to char field that has been there before um, so now we can do the rename Item rename migration, and now the migrations could be edit and committed. Uh, I'm going to amend, amend more, and uh, now we can run migrate. Um, and it should be working, but it's not. <sighs> For fuck's sake. How can data be too long? If we are migrating to text field, what was it again? It was text field. It is text field now. Hold up. Wait. This is migrating skills, not items. I have missed that. But on production, we are synced up. So this shouldn't be a problem on production, this is only a problem for us. Um, for some reason, and I assume the reason is different MySQL version. And the solution would be to add this before skills. Uh, So, if I would temporarily rename it, I mean, we can copy to twenty what three to to make sure it's before. could just temporarily copy paste this into that migration that is totally an anti pattern but we are handling the local migration only um, the alternative would be Hmm. 
the alternative would be to reboot the local database from scratch. Uh, also, technically, we don't need all migrations. Uh, we only need the one for skills. So. For this one, if we put it here under the, the old name, this should make it work for us. Or not. Right, because we are um, merging it back, so this is the one that should be in the end. Okay, and this is potentially committable um, so not um migration is fixed Okay, so now we should be up to date with everything, including the rename. Uh, so now if we run server, well, server should be running, okay. Um, then if we reload this, that should be created. Yep. Fair. So I have 10 minutes, let's see where we can make it. Uh, so, we do have the model. Um, that we will totally want to work with uh, on the in the view and the view is game item list and uh, now I prefer it on the left side sorry um, So in the list you're starting with the uh, article and uh, what is what we should use in this item? Um, hmm. Well definitely a group. Uh, that's what, what we are going to filter on. Maybe also price. Uh, price is something people are interested in. Yeah, 
red zero, poor people. So that works, and um, let's go for detail then. Uh, so game item detail. Of course the paste is not working, why do you ask? So, um, oh, I've copied for monsters instead of I uh, skulls, right? Yeah. This is the newer version with the altering, ordering, and whatnot uh, sorted out. Uh, so, name. There, and there we go, and there we go for the rest, and yeah, so again, this is mood, uh, this is the description, this is our template, uh, let's make it more obvious. Um, five minutes, okay, we'd have to last three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's actually look in the, in this source for the correct ordering. Um, because this is pretty sparsely populated uh, so it's probably not going to be correctly uh, despite if you just look at the production um, so this is the PHP code in the rook encoding and okay group Attack number. It's actually called uh, differently in the source and in the name. So here we have a bad domain dictionary again. Hmm. This relies on you knowing the rules, uh, this should be expanded. Uh, but I guess that's uh, for the editor uh, to ask what it should be. Um, oh. Good, we are not going immediately for description. Uh, we are going for how long, how long can it shoot? Uh, are we using the proper wording? Yep. So,
then going for sphere. Yep. Uh, so sphere is uh, related to the metrical system in the game. Uh, And wait. And the description, of course. Yep. So this looks plausible good. Um, I am saying ship it. Um, so let's add templates. Uh, and let's call this uh, and items and that's referring 53 and um, let's not deploy it now because I have to go uh, but also let's actually merge it to the um, Oh, what was the branch again? Um, gosh. Uh, new creative pages. And let's merge the Add game items there, and if we push, uh, we should be okay. But before I do that, let me see what's in this because it really looks like a cache. Yeah, of whatever. So let's remove it and. Um, it in the comments. Cool. So another job all done, and um, I think we'll continue uh, with um, adding those so we're all kind of feature complete in a week and um, it's probably going to be either Wednesday or uh, either Wednesday again or Thursday uh, I'll see watch it on Twitter I uh, will figure it out so thanks for everyone who stopped by and for your attention enjoy the week and um, see you soon bye